My name is Murray Hebert from CSIS, the Southeast Asia program. Our guest this morning is Ambassador David Edelman of Singapore. Ambassador, welcome. Thank you. Good um, morning. Good morning. Uh, it's a delight to have you. Can, can we, uh, could we maybe start talking a little bit about the Singapore-U.S. relationship? It's been a strong relationship for a long time. How would you characterize it today? Well, U.S.-Singapore relations are at an all-time high. Uh, things have never been uh, better. Uh, the historic foundation of the good relations, uh, of course, is military-to-military -military cooperation, and uh, that continues. Uh, the trade and investment um, aspect of the relationship, I think, has uh, developed better than anyone could have ever even uh, imagined. Uh, and now this third part, uh, the political and economic uh, dialogue, I think, is uh, becoming more uh, institutionalized, if you will. So I couldn't be more pleased with the state of the relationship. The uh, the U.S. and Singapore did a, a free trade agreement. And, you know, free trade agreements are sometimes controversial in the U.S., maybe in many other countries, too. But in the U.S., it's often thought that U.S. companies are losers. Singapore probably has a, a different story, right? Well, Singapore is um, probably the freest trading nation uh, on the planet. Uh, and I think the U.S.-Singapore Free Trade Agreement, which went into effect in 2004, is a great example of uh, a success story uh, for the United States and American businesses. Tiny little Singapore represents America's fifth largest trade surplus, in large part, I think, because of the terms of that agreement. In February, there was a conference here in, 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 in Washington, at, at CSIS, there were three ministers here, but at the same time, there were there were bilateral meetings happening with official Washington, um, and there were three agreements signed. Could you talk a little bit about what those agreements were and how the U.S.-Singapore relationship will benefit from these? Sure. This is what I referred to when I, I said sort of the other part of the relationship becoming more regularized uh, or institutionalized. Uh, on February 1st, uh, we launched with Secretary Clinton and Foreign Minister Shamugan a strategic partnership uh, dialogue between the United States and Singapore, which for the first time um, sets up uh, an annual uh, alternating uh, meeting uh, at the very high level to talk about economic and political uh, issues and uh, cooperation between the U.S. Uh, and Singapore. Uh, at the same time as that launch, we also signed an agreement which provides for uh, third-party activities where the United States uh, and Singapore will jointly work on uh, capacity building uh, in third countries. We're going to start with an initiative in the Lower Mekong, and uh, it promises to be um, an important part of this relationship for many years to come. Singapore had an election last year, a couple of elections last year, and the opposition did better than it had traditionally. Uh, is politics in Singapore changing? Well, I'll, I'll use the same word used by Prime Minister Lee. Uh, the elections uh, in May of last year were watershed elections. I think uh, there was a level of uh, discourse and political uh, dialogue that perhaps had never existed previously in an independent uh, Singapore. So. Uh, while the United States doesn't get involved uh, in local politics, we simply hold ourselves out as a good example of a multi-party uh, democracy. You couldn't help but um, observe uh, the increasing uh, political dialogue in Singapore. Uh, jumping back to U.S.-Singapore relations for a second, the um, U.S. has taken a policy of rebalancing toward Asia, as, as uh, President Obama announced when he was traveling through the region last November. Is there a role for Singapore to play with, in cooperation with the U.S. in this rebalancing exercise? Oh, absolutely. Singapore is critical to uh, America's rebalancing in Asia. We don't have a better friend uh, in East Asia than uh, Singapore, which has served uh, as our anchor if you will, in Southeast Asia. So uh, Singapore continues to be um, um, a very hospitable business climate for American businesses, where more than 2,000 U.S. Uh, firms have important uh, decision makers and operations. Uh, it continues to be a place where the United States Navy and the United States Air Force uh, enjoy great uh, access uh, and cooperation. Uh, and I think um, those relationships will grow and continue to uh, be an important part of America's pivot or a rebalancing towards Asia. During the elections last year and, and subsequently, the blogs and websites have played a more active role in, in Singapore. Do you see that, uh, th that uh, the electronic media being able to play a significant role in opening up Singapore's political discourse? 
Well, the electronic media and social media have played an important role in elections all over the world. I think uh, the 2008 uh, presidential election in the United States in, in some ways were a milestone for the impact of, of, of that media in our country. So Singapore's no different. They're a part uh, of the trend. And I suppose uh, the speech and the, the back and forth and puts and takes that occur uh, uh, in, in the um, discussion uh, online will continue to be increasingly important in Singapore in the same way they will be increasingly important in every other country in the world. Great. Thank you very much, Ambassador Edelman. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Murray.